Hello and welcome to St. Luke's Anglican Church. During this Holy Week, we have a bonus service for you, uh, just a series of meditations we've been having through Holy Week in person, and we want to share the gist of those with our preacher, uh, Deacon Jane. And so uh, let's just still our hearts as we remember, Lord, all that you've done for us. We thank you for the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. We thank you for your ministry of teaching during this Holy Week. But most of all, we thank you that you went to the cross to save us and how you rose again victorious from the dead. And we thank you, Lord, for how your cross is a pattern for us. We ask your anointing on Deacon Jane as she reads and preaches your word and on us as we hear. For we pray in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. And so we'll call on Deacon Jane to read our lessons and bring us God's word. The first reading is from the letter to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness that God, sorry, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. That by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks. to God. To God. In the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Chapter 9, beginning at the 21st verse. And he strictly charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God, the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, I don't know what it's like where you live, those who are watching this, 
But here, spring has been a crazy bunch of reversals. It's cold, it's hot, it's warm, it's freezing cold. We had such a warm winter, it was pretty cloudy and gray. We're longing for sunshine. And now we hear we need the rain. We don't, it has, and it hasn't been cold enough. We think we want warmth, but we know we actually need the cold. Reversals, constantly coming and going. In these passages, we hear of great reversals, of things set upside down. And we hear from Jesus that if we want life, the only way is through death. And he's the one who knows the way. So come and follow him. And what does that take? He says, we'll have to deny ourselves. And that means instead of self first and it being all about me and my feelings, what I think I need, it's about God, the one who made me and the one who knows what my life is for. The one who loves me enough that he's going to die to remove sin. If I give him my sin, he takes it and it's no longer between me and God. And he will lead me through life. So deny myself and follow him by taking up a cross. Now his is the one cross that saves, that deals with sin. Takes away sin that we give to him. But we're to take up our cross. To identify with Jesus and be willing to suffer. To go where he leads, to walk with him. And Paul has entered into this journey. And he says that if anybody was going to think they were good enough as they were, it was him. According to God's law, God's way, he'd done everything. He could even say blameless, a Jew of the Jews, a Pharisee even. And you know, today our equivalent might be, I'm an amazing Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I give this, I pray that, I serve in the community. And that's not what saves us. Jesus says to come and follow him. Deny self. Our identity has to be in Jesus and in coming close. And Philippians unpacks that for us. That all the other things we were counting on to make our lives worthwhile, to make God think we're worthy of his love and acceptance into eternal life with him. We have to let them go. They're rubbish. They're garbage. Give it up. And we can for the great worth, the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus and being found in him. And if we will give up our way, trying to make our own lives and accept his judgment on sin and self without God, he gives righteousness and he gives life. And Paul says we can be found in him. We can be holding on so tightly to things that we can't come into him. But we can let them go. So I just want to encourage you, whatever you've been thinking your life is about, if it's apart from Jesus, or sometimes even it's for Jesus, but it started to take his place. We think our ministry or the praise we give him it just matters so much that work we're doing that he called us to it can even be taking his place let it go into his hands if it's for us if it's with him then we'll be able to take it up but as part of doing life with jesus and not apart from him so i just want to encourage you brothers and sisters there is a savior He's the one who saves us, and his love is so great, we can let anything else go for more of him. So I just invite you this Easter to letting go and taking up the cross so that you can be close and closer to Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to invite Jane, if we can sing a song that uh, is a famous little chorus that I think expresses some of what Jane was saying. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things 
other will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you, Janie. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray. Lord, we want to thank you that you have given all for us, that you emptied yourself, took the form of a servant, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Lord, we thank you that your cross saves us, your resurrection saves us as we put our trust in you. It's your righteousness, Lord, that we receive by faith, not our own. Thank you, Lord. And so right now, as Jane has reminded us from your word, we think of those things that maybe hinder or get in the way, those things that we let go or let get in your place. Father, we ask you to forgive us. And anything that we're carrying, this is just an opportunity tonight, this holy week, to lay them at the foot of your cross. We give them over to you, Lord. And if there's anything in particular that comes to mind that we've been clinging to, that we need to let go of, to deny ourselves, we just take that moment, Lord, we give it to you. And we ask for your help, Lord, that even as you forgive us, that you would help us to follow you. We need your guidance and we need your help. Thank you, Lord. May this Holy Week, this Good Friday and Easter, be a time of growing closer to you and more like you. So I conclude this prayer with one of the prayers in our prayer book for Holy Week. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining us on this bonus short Holy Week service. We will also have uh, two other recorded services this week. We'll have a, a, a Monday, Thursday, Good Friday service that will be one. And then, of course, we'll have a service for Easter Sunday. We'd love you to, to join us. Or if you can join us in person, if you're in the area, uh, our service uh, services during Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, and, and on Holy Wednesday are 6.30 uh, p.m., and then on Good Friday at three in the afternoon, on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we have a, a sunrise service at 6.30 and then services at eight and 10 with the children's program at the 10 o'clock service. We'd love you to have you join us if you're able. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all you love this Holy Week, this Easter, and always. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.